I've been using React for about 10 years now. I've convinced multiple teams and organizations to migrate to React, and it's been my go-to solution for internal tools and personal projects. But now I'm considering making a change and finding something new to replace React. Stick around and I'll explain why and what I'm thinking about using instead. First, let me be clear. I still like React, and if you're new to front-end development or trying to learn a skill that will actually get you a job, I still think that React is probably the best framework to learn. Well, after you learn how to use JavaScript to manipulate the DOM, of course, because it's best to learn the basics first, but React isn't going away anytime soon. There are countless existing applications with who knows how many millions of lines of code all in React that need developers to help maintain them, which makes sense. It's a mature ecosystem with a rich community and it's the most used framework on the web. So if I say I like React, then you're probably wondering, well, then why do I want to find something different? Well, it's complicated, so let me try to explain. The reason I originally started using React, and I think the reason a lot of people started using React and it gained popularity so quickly, was because it was such a huge leap forward in technology at the time it came out. Back in 2015, I was writing UIs using HTML and jQuery because back then, browser APIs weren't standardized, so jQuery provided this standard interface to manipulate the DOM using JavaScript. The equivalent now would be to use HTML and vanilla JavaScript, but back then, then jQuery was almost essential. Back then, I would use template strings in JavaScript and use that to dynamically create the HTML that would show up on the page for the dynamic parts of the site that I was writing. Everything worked fine, but it was a slow development process, honestly. Then I found React, and that was a game changer. I could combine HTML and the site's dynamic behavior into the same JavaScript files, and the part of JavaScript that actually created the HTML, it looked like real HTML. It was amazing. But what I really loved about React was the underlying philosophy of how it was designed. It had these principles that I think are essential to any good framework or system. First, it solved a big problem at the time. It uses a virtual DOM and working with that virtual DOM means I don't have to worry about differences between different browsers. If you've ever had to work on an application that is required to work on Internet Explorer, you know exactly the pain I'm talking about. This is the same pain point that jQuery was able to solve, but React did it in a different way. Second, React is simple. Each component is a class. You can optionally override methods on that class to get different behavior, and you really only had to know a few different rules to avoid problems with things like state or side effects. That simplicity means it's quick and easy to learn and to get started using, but it also means you can take these simple components and use them as building blocks to build complex things and then use those to build even more complex things so you can build as complex of a system you want to using these small fundamental units, these components. And third, it wasn't opinionated, which means it's very flexible in how it can be used. Sure, you can use it to write an entire single page application, but I was originally using it in PHP, where only the dynamic components were written in React and the rest was all server-side generated. Like if I had a page that showed a table of data that was fetched from the server, then the PHP part would render out everything with a placeholder for the table, and then my React component would mount into that small table fetch the data, and then render it in. If you wanted, you could even use React on the server side in something like Express and use React to then render out server side code and hydrate it on the client side to get all that dynamic behavior. All of that was possible out of the box from functions that React gave you. So at the time, React was exciting and it felt like nothing else I had used at the time. But fast forward now, 10 years later, and things feel a little bit different to me about React. The virtual DOM is no longer a selling point. Browsers now all use the same standard API, so there's no longer a need from a developer experience perspective to actually have this abstraction layer between us and the real DOM. And a common complaint nowadays is that the virtual DOM is causing performance problems. I'm on the fence about that argument. I think that it might actually be more about implementation, but I'll talk about it a little bit more later. But for now, one of my initial reasons for choosing React, the virtual DOM, 
no longer really matters and is probably more of a liability simply because it's adding more complexity without really giving me any benefit from a developer experience perspective. The second reason I originally loved React was because of its simplicity, and I feel that's been eroded as well over the years. And here's where I want to talk a little bit about the performance of React. I think the biggest complaint nowadays is that React can often re-render entire component subtrees too often, or at the least, if you render one node in the tree, it's gonna re-render all of the children underneath it, even if those children haven't changed. I first noticed this when I first switched over to using hooks, like way back when. Uh, at the time, I was working on a project that used Redux for state management, and when we started using hooks, I actually wanted to evaluate and like to, to figure out the details of what caused re-renders and why. And the weird thing that I found was, in the code, when I was using Redux with the higher order components, where I was passing in derived props to the components, um, the, the re-rendering was very well controlled. But when I switched over to using the Redux hooks instead of the higher order components, all of a sudden, everything was re-rendering any time the state tree changed at all, even if I only cared about like one value in the entire state tree. This was like six years ago, so maybe Redux has improved over time, but at the time, because we were seeing this re-render problem, we actually made the decision to, you know, we're gonna use hooks, sure, but for Redux, we were staying on higher order components and not using the, the hooks that were available for Redux. And my point is, I was already seeing back then some over-eager re-rendering from React hooks. And since then, there have been a lot of changes and evolutions in the best practices that you should be using to make sure that you're preventing those re-renders when you're using hooks. If you really know what you're doing and you're very careful about your data and your code, you can get good performance out of React. Here's what it takes. First, you need to understand what causes a component to re-render. And that means you have to understand basic JavaScript types and equality. So things like numbers, strings, booleans, those are easy to compare. The equality is straightforward. But if you're passing objects or functions around, that's where things can get messy and can trip you up and cause unintentional re-renders. All of your props and your state values have to be designed with renders in mind. Any changes to the equality of a prop value or a state value from the old value to the new value, that's gonna cause a re-render. Once you understand that, React has hooks that are specifically made to improve performance. The use memo hook can be used to avoid recalculating the same value over and over again if nothing else has changed. And if that returned value is an object, and you're passing that object into your children, that will also allow you to improve the re-rendering of your child objects because you know the object didn't change, React notices it didn't change, and therefore it doesn't re-render. And the use callback hook does the same thing for functions, which is critical for any type of event handlers you wanna pass down to child components to make sure you're not accidentally re-rendering that child component every single time. But in both cases, you have to manage the dependencies on both your use memo and use callback code. And you have the same thing with use effect. You're gonna have to have this managed list of dependencies for any of the code that goes into use effect. But things have continued to get even more complicated because now in 19.2, we've got the use effect event hook, which I think is like a fix to improve how lint handles leaving out a particular dependency from use effect that you don't want to cause re-renders. Um, I only looked at it a little bit, so maybe the example in the documentation actually does have a real performance impact besides just removing the dependency and then having Lint complain to you. But it does seem like it's just adding complexity and I'm not really getting anything out of it in return, tangible. It's just fixing this linting problem. So performance can be good in React. It's just that now it's requiring more cognitive load to get it done right. And that just means that React isn't as simple as it used to be. The third selling point that got me into React was that it's not opinionated. And I still think that it's on the unopinionated side of the spectrum, but I do think that it slid a little bit closer to center, if you know what I mean. Writing components requires a good amount of acquired knowledge now to get it done right. As I already discussed, you have to worry about, you know, use callback and use memo to make sure that you're not accidentally causing re-renders. Um, the new use effect event is just another 
weird syntax you have to now worry about. And obviously if we're talking about opinionated, there's this general concern in the community about this push into React server components. And you know, I don't wanna make this a video about Next.js and how that's impacted the development of React, but uh, you know, that's certainly a concern because we're now we're getting more opinionated about what React itself is saying as far as you, know, you should be using Next.js. Um, so it's definitely not as unopinionated as it used to be, you know, 10 years ago. So with all these changes I noticed with React, I started to wonder, is there anything out there that has that old school React feel where it's simple, unopinionated, uh, just, you know, simply a pleasure to work with? What else is out there? And so I actually want to take a minute and take a look at all the available options that are out there now and see if something might work better for me as a solo dev. I'm used to working on larger applications with larger teams, and in that case, sure, React probably still makes sense, but by myself, maybe I can find something that allows me to build faster, to iterate faster, to get more done in less time. So I've been looking around a bit to see what's out there, and I think I've narrowed it down to a couple of choices to at least evaluate and see how they work. First, Angular and Vue are both popular options, but I've ruled both of them out. I've actually used Angular a lot in the past few years, and honestly, it's not anything I would ever choose for a personal project. It's not simple, it's very opinionated, it has a very steep learning curve, it has its own crazy set of syntax built on top of JavaScript, including Java style annotations for some reason. I still can't wrap my brain around the RxJS and observables pattern they use for simple like one-time data fetching. I'm not really a fan of the concept of data binding that's core to Angular. It, it seems alien to how the DOM actually works to me. So it, it just doesn't fit with my philosophy of frameworks I like to work with. So Angular is definitely out. I also use Vue a lot back when 2.7 was the current version and Vue is a lot better than Angular. I give it that much. Actually, Vue is a really good option. I do like Vue, but it's still Angular inspired. It has that same data binding concept, which I'm not really a fan of. Um, it's still fairly opinionated, so you know it, it's not making that list of things that I'm excited to go work on. So you know if if I'm going to build a project and my only options are React and Vue, and I have a choice, I'm still choosing React because I happen to like it better. So again, Vue is not on my list either. But after digging around on other options I've never tried, I've narrowed it down to trying out Svelte and Solid JS. Both have been gaining popularity over the past few years. Both have really high user satisfaction ratings according to the State of JS uh, surveys. And I've poked around the docs a bit for both of them to get a feel for what they look like. And they both look really interesting. SolidJS is also built on JSX, which is the same HTML-like syntax that React uses. So it looks like this version of React that's more like what I originally loved about React. So it's exciting to try out and see how it actually works. And Svelte takes a different direction and actually seems to take what I like about Vue, which is you have these separate sections for the HTML template, the actual scripting part, and the, uh, the, the style, the CSS, all in one file, which seems like a really nice way to work and could be really productive. But my impression is also that it's very streamlined and simplified, giving you foundational tools to build how you want. So it's always exciting to try out something that's totally new. I'm not sure when I'll actually have a chance to evaluate these two, but I'm hoping that in the next month or so, I'll be able to dedicate some time to playing around with them. And I don't really know what the outcome will be. Maybe I'll decide to use Svelte or Solid on my next project, or maybe I'll decide to keep using React despite my concerns. But whatever I decide, I'll come back and give you an update and let you know how things go. If you have any other suggestions for frameworks I should try out, or if you have any tips or tricks for using Svelte or SolidJS, let me know in the comments below. I could always use the help. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.